Good afternoon, my name is Lois Dix, and I'm here today to provide you with a sample of just who I can be. Our Father, which art in heaven. Yes. Don't interrupt me, I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you, I'm praying. Our Father, which art in heaven. There, you did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, which art in heaven, here I am. What's on your mind? What do you mean, what's on my mind? I was just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good, like having something crossed off the to-do list each day. All right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? When you say, hallowed be thy name. It means, uh, well, how am I supposed to know what it means? I don't use words like that. It's just part of the prayer. I suppose you know what it means. It means honored, holy, wonderful. Well, that makes sense. I never thought about what Halloween meant before. Can I go on now? Of course. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? What are you doing about it? Doing? Me? Nothing, I guess. I just think you could get control of everything down here like you have up there. Have I got control of you? Sure. I go to church every week. I help out when they need help. That isn't what I asked you. What about when you're driving? That temper of yours. You've really got a problem there, you know. What about those items you conveniently missed on your tax return? How about when you got too much change at the store? and didn't go back to return it. Did you stop to think that the cashier would have it taken out of her own pay that week? Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as any of the other people who go to church. Excuse me. I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, you will have to start with the ones who are praying for it, like you, for example. Well, I guess I do have some issues that need work. Now that you mention it, I could probably name some others. Yes, so could I. I haven't thought about it very much until now, but I really would like to change some of those things. Sometimes I do feel like I'm not living my life like I should be. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some victories can truly be won. I'm proud of you. I really need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. So, go ahead, continue. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out some of that bread. You could do to lose some weight. Maybe share that bread with others who don't have enough. Hey, wait a minute. What's with all this criticism? Here I was doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden you break in and start telling me everything I am and do that is wrong. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I don't think I want to go on. I'm afraid to. Afraid? Afraid of what? Because I know what you'll say next. So try me and see. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What about Sandra? I knew it. See? I knew you would bring her up. She told lies about me to others and stole money and other stuff from me. And she never paid back that debt she owes me for the loan I actually gave her. Someday I will get my payback. But I don't ever want to associate with her again. But your prayer? What about your prayer? I didn't really mean it. Well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying that load of bitterness around inside you, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I get even. She'll wish she never got on the wrong side of me. You won't feel any better. You'll only feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you are already. But I can change all that. You can? How? Forgive her. 
right now. Then the hate and sin will be Sanders' problem, not yours. You may lose the money, but you will have settled your heart. But Lord, I don't think I can forgive her. Then, how do you expect me to forgive you? Oh, you're right. You always are. And more than I want revenge on her, I need to be right with you. All right, I will forgive her, Lord. Can you help me find, can you help her to find the right road in life? She's bound to be awfully miserable now that I think about it. Anybody who goes around doing the things she does can't be really happy. Maybe you could even help me find a way to help her? There now, wonderful. How do you feel? Oh, well, not bad, not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty great. You know, I don't think I'll have to go to bed up tight tonight for the first time since I can remember. Maybe I won't be so tired from now on because I can start getting a good night's sleep. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Oh, all right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good, good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? You might have to change some of your friendships. Some of your friends are beginning to influence you in negative ways. You may think they're having fun, but for you it could be ruin. Either you're going to have to stop being with them or start being a positive influence on their lives. Don't use me as an escape hatch. I don't understand. Sure you do. You've done it a lot of times. You get caught in a bad situation. You get into trouble by not listening to me. And then once you do it, you come running to me saying, Lord, help me out of this mess. And I promise you I'll never do it again. You remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me, don't you? Yes, I do, and I'm ashamed, or really I am. Which bargain are you remembering? Well, when I thought I was going to get that speeding ticket driving 130 on the highway and didn't see the police car until I had passed it. I remember telling you, oh God, please don't let me get a ticket, I can't afford it. I promise to read my Bible, do devotions, and pray every day, and be in church every Sunday. You didn't get a ticket. He pulled over the guy who actually passed you by going this, through the speed trap. But you didn't keep your promise, did you? I'm sorry, Lord, I really am. Up until now, I thought that if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, nothing else really mattered. I didn't expect anything like this to happen. Go ahead and finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would make me really happy? No, but I'd like to know. I want to please you. I know what a difference it can make in my life. I can see what a mess I've made of my life, and I can see how great it would be to re be really one of your followers. You just answered my question. I did? Yes. The thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me. And I see that happening between us now. Now that those old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Lord, let's see what we can make of me and my life, okay? Yes, let's see. Amen. Jesus' teaching on prayer from Luke 11, Verses 1 to 13. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answered, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, 
Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. When we take time to pray, do we do so with the expectation that God will actually respond? As we saw already, there is nothing more surprising than having God actually respond in a conversational manner when we pray. How often do we pray without actually thinking about what we say? And do we believe we have been given an answer from God when it isn't what we're hoping for? I remember many years ago when my mother was sick with cancer and there was not much chance she would recover. I would sit by her bedside for hours and pray. At some point, I felt that praying for her to recover was not the direction I should be looking, since she was getting progressively worse. I realized, though, that I wasn't praying with the expectation that she would be recovering. So I changed my prayer, and instead I prayed that her pain would subside. That was the prayer that did get answered. The tumor in her spine had grown to the point that it caused enough paralysis to keep the pain away. No longer in severe pain, she was completely off all pain medications for the three weeks before she died. Sometimes when we pray, we do so already knowing what we ask is probably not likely going to happen. Just imagine, if prayers for God to heal every terminally ill person were answered, we would have a world of immortal people who would never die. I don't think that's what God intended when he promised he would answer when we called to him. In fact, a friend of mine who spent time serving the Salvation Army in Russia told me that when somebody gets terminally, terminally sick, they pray that God will take them quickly. They don't pray for physical healing. Instead, they pray for spiritual healing, that God will take them home to be with him not let them suffer for a long time before passing away. She said that was one of the cultural differences that seemed very strange and took some time to assimilate while serving there. Now think of your own situations. Many of you have had family members who experienced serious illness or troubled times. As Christians, we usually offer prayers on behalf of the person or the situation which they are facing. We even do that in our own churches, whether using a bulletin or a PowerPoint presentation. We offer up prayers on those who are named. Sometimes it may be a friend of someone who we don't even know, but we pray for them anyway. I get a lot of prayer requests on Facebook from friends asking for prayers on behalf of themselves, family, or their friends. Sometimes it is a specific prayer, or it could be an unspoken reason. We pray for those individuals and often don't know how God answers those prayers, but we believe that he did provide an answer. One tendency that often arises during times of stress, fear, or panic is what I call the plea bargain prayer. This is the time when we realize we haven't really been living close to God in our daily lives, but when the crunch comes, we figure that if we try to make a bargain with God, that he might be more willing to listen to us. God, if you make such and such happen, I will go to church every Sunday from now on, or I will offer to volunteer my services to the church council, or the trustees, or teach a Sunday school class. Often, after the crisis passes and God provides an answer, we conveniently forget our part of the bargain. Or we keep it going for a few weeks and then lose interest. 
Paul says in Romans that the suffering he faces can't be compared to the glory that God will reveal in and to them. He also says that when we don't know what we should pray for, the Holy Spirit will guide us in our words. All things result in good for those who are called by God. This doesn't say that only good things result in God, but all things. We may not think the result is good, but that is not what qualifies our prayers as being answered. Let's look at a situation that could take place in any family between a parent and child and the many answers that could result. The child arrives home from school and walks into the kitchen where mom is just putting supper together. The first thing the child asks is, Mom, can I have a sandwich? What are the mom's possible answers? Let's think about it. The response the child is hoping for is that mom will just say yes. The sandwich is made and happily eaten. Or she might say yes, but only half a sandwich, not the whole thing. Another response might be, you can have a sandwich, but not right now. You can have it for a snack later at bedtime. All of these answers are variations on a positive response of yes. There is also the possibility that the answer would be no when the child asks for a sandwich. Mom might just say, no, you're not having a sandwich. It will ruin your dinner. I know my mom said that a lot to me. Or mom could say, you can have a snack, but not a sandwich. Have an apple or a banana. So in effect, it's a no, but it could be a partial yes. Not what the child had hoped for, but it is mom's decision. When we come to God with requests through our prayers, he also answers in ways similar to the mom in the example. There are times when we come to God with a request and we receive a resounding yes in response. I had a Facebook prayer request a few years back for the nephew of a friend of mine. He had essentially drowned with no response and had been flown to a children's hospital. They put him on life support there so that when his parents arrived, they could sign off for organ transplant. But they said no. Not many days later, he regained consciousness and had a complete recovery. God answered the many prayers that went up on his behalf. There are times when we ask God for something in prayer and his response might be, yes, but you'll have to wait until later. We must learn to be patient and wait for God to enact his plan in our lives and in the lives of others. There may be any number of reasons why God makes the decision to hold off for a period of time. It may be to help us become stronger in our own faith or for others to see God is working in our lives. This happened in my own life. For several years, I had prayed that God would bring me a Christian woman for a partner. I had long given up and figured I would be single all my life. Then, after almost 30 years, my prayers have been answered, and I now have a wonderful wife in my life. Another way we could get a positive answer might be, yes, but you'll only get part of what you're asking. I had a friend several years ago who spent 46 months in hospital. When she was released, she still was not well, and has made many more visits to hospital but she is able to be home with her husband and several dogs. But she still deals with medical issues several years later. God may also say, no, it's not in your best interest or in the best interest of those involved. There are times when we don't realize that the answer we want is not the best answer in a particular situation. A musician acquaintance of mine lost her three-year-old daughter to drowning. She fell in a backyard fish pond at the neighbor's house. They were able to keep her on life supports, but all signs were that she was brain dead. 
For her to live may not have been the best situation for her or for her family. Does that mean that God abandoned them? No. He was with her and with her family the entire three days before they decided to let her go. However, in this particular situation, other prayers were answered with a resounding yes, because five other children were able to receive organ transplants as her family gave permission for her organs to be harvested. The other reason God may say no is that he has other plans for the individuals involved. This would be the apple instead of a sandwich situation. We don't always understand why things happen and what God is trying to show us when he decides to answer with an outcome that is totally different from that for which we have been praying. The Bible tells us that he knew us before we were born and the days ahead of us are known to him. We cannot know what lies ahead, but he knows, and we have faith that his plan is best for us. Whatever God's answer will be when we pray to him, it is important that we spend time every day in prayer. Prayer is not just asking for God to do something for us or for someone else. It is a time in which we get to know him personally. If we don't spend time with God, we don't always recognize his plans for us or know his answers to our prayers, whether yes or no. And we have to be willing to accept the answer if it is not what we want. He listens to all our prayers. He will never leave us alone and will always answer us. Martin Luther, many years ago, had some good advice. He said, faith does not ask why, but what. Not why did this happen, but what are you trying to teach us, God? Asking why will lead to blame and resentment. God is good to us, and he will help us through the troubled times as well as the good times. I want to close with a poem I heard many years ago. And thanks to the internet, I was able to find it one day when I was thinking about it. I think it expresses how God may answer prayers in ways we do not expect. It's called Don't Miss Out. The man whispered, God, speak to me. And a meadowlark sang, but the man did not hear. So the man yelled, God, speak to me. And the thunder rolled across the sky but the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you. And a star shone brightly, but the man did not notice. And the man shouted, God, show me a miracle. And a life was born, but the man did not know. So the man cried out in despair, touch me, God, and let me know you are here. Whereupon God reached down and touched the man. But the man brushed the butterfly off his sh shoulder and walked on. Shall we pray? O oh God, creator and preserver of all, we pray for all people and especially those in any kind of need through famine, war, or natural disaster. O oh God, may your saving ways be known by all peoples. As we pray for the church throughout the world, may you guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all who call themselves Christians may know your love and live lives of holy service through Christ our Lord. May we all be witnesses to your love and compassion. We pray for those who are suffering, that you will bring comfort and healing in body, mind, and spirit. Give them some serenity, peace, and hope in their troubles, and bless all those who are caregivers for those who are ill. If it be your will, accept them to your heavenly kingdom to live eternally in your presence. We also pray for ourselves and our ministries. Give grace to us as we live our lives in your love, and help us to share with others your forgiveness and grace. As we rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints, we lift ourselves and all people to you in your unfailing love and grace. 
Accept these prayers, we pray, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.